Cyclocross is a discipline that can be brutally hard on both rider and bike. So any technological advantage that can help you to get more grip, help your bike be a bit lighter and help keep your shifting and braking better for longer in the worst conditions of the year could well make the difference between winning and losing. We're at a couple of races in Belgium and we thought we'd have a look around the pits and see what the pros are using to get the edge on their opponents. With SRAM athletes almost all preferring to use one bike, it was only a matter of time before a Shimano rider chose to do that too. And of course, it's Sven Nace. Sven's mechanics have got an outer chain guard and they use the inner chain guard on the Trek Boon frame. Now, the outer chain guard, and I have to pass the credit to Simon Richardson for this one, is actually a Shimano Dura Ace 53 tooth road chainring. You can see the 5339 markings there. And Sven's mechanics have ground this down to make it fit for use as an outer chain guard. The inner chainring is a 44 tooth and that's stamped up as a prototype. Whereas getting a road bike down below the UCI's lower weight limit of 6.8 kilos, it's not really that hard for most pro teams. Getting a cross bike down towards that weight is a bit more difficult thanks to the chunkier tyres, bigger brakes, slightly chunkier frame. Everything is just a little bit heavier. So interestingly, Wout Van Aert's bike, which came in at 6.8 kilos, incredibly light for a cross bike, goes without paint for the most part. He and his Vascud Service Golden Palace team have fully matte Colnagos, so lose a lot of the fancy paintwork that actually adds a couple of hundred grams to a bike. How much benefit is a light cross bike? Well, if you think you've got to run for 100 metres through a muddy field or you've got to run up a hill, it probably feels better to have a super light cross bike than it might do to have a super light road bike. Cool stuff. We're the ERA Real Estate Cyclocross team's setup, camp, and they have prototype Shimano pedals. We've seen them on a couple of other bikes, including Sven Nasus, but what appears to be different about these is that they look very much like XTR pedals, but they have slightly better mud clearance than XTR pedals, so they strike the balance between XTR and XT pedals, presumably with the low weight of XTR pedals and the clearance of XT. Cyclocross tyres make the difference between winning and losing a cross race. They're the most important component on a bike. So it's interesting to see brands developing file treads with elements of the mud tyre on the very edges. What that gives is a tyre that goes really fast in a straight line and has a ton of grip going through the corners. So a tyre that covers a load of courses and a load of different conditions. So Challenge, just behind me, for the Fidea team have worked up a Challenge Griffo team prototype tyre. So something different with the tread and the sidewall. I'll have to keep an eye on that and see how it develops. Saddle choice is a really interesting one in cyclocross. Basically what you want is you want a platform that is safe and pretty comfortable to land on when you hop back on the bike because it's 60 minutes, you're in and out of the saddle the whole time. So. It's interesting to see Kevin Powell's go for a Sele SMP Stratos saddle, which Sele SMP have this big channel down the middle. That's their design, supposedly for comfort over slightly longer distances. And I can't imagine that offers a big platform to hop back onto and might be slightly uncomfortable. So it's interesting to see Powell's prioritize comfort in the saddle over perhaps, or in my belief, practicality out on the course. This is Tom Mason's Ridley X Knight. And his mechanics have done something really quite interesting with the shifting and the braking here that pretty much any of us can do with most bikes. That is this. So, Mason has a full length of outer cable from his shifters and his brakes right the way through to the brakes or the rear neck. And what that means is that with a full outer cable, everything is a bit more sealed than it would be if there was some inner showing. So it prevents any dirt, water getting in quite as much as it would with inner cable. So it's gonna help over the course of an hour long, really muddy race. And it's gonna help his mechanics with ongoing maintenance because the cables are gonna just need replacing less often throughout the season. Good tip. So there's a look at some of the ways that some of the best guys in the cyclocross pro peloton get the edge on their opponents. If you'd like to see how the road guys and their teams do it, just click right there. To see some cyclocross how-to videos and find out how you can get better at cross without improving your bike, click down there. And finally, to subscribe to GCN, click, I think on Class Ventor now, right there. Right, so there are a few, right, so there are a few, so there's some of the ways that the, so there's, 